Let us look at the derivatives of the trigonometric functions. So I'm going to give you the first two. Now you should be familiar with trigonometric functions at this stage and also the product and quotient and chain rule of differentiation. So here's the first two, sine and cos. Yet again, at the end of this playlist, I will put in a video where I show you using the definition of the derivative, why the derivative of sine of x is cos of x and why the derivative of cos of x is minus sine of x. So you either just want to use these and just know the rules, or if you want to know where they come from, you can look at the end of this playlist for those videos. So here we go. The derivative of sine x is cos x. The derivative of cos x is minus sine x. So just watch those signs, the pluses and minuses. All right, so yet again, once we bring the chain rule into it, it gets a little bit more complicated, but not much if we know those two to start off with. So if I say y is equal to x squared minus 2x times cos x, again, we see this is an example of the product rule. So we first look at the product rule before we look at anything else. So the derivative is the first, x squared minus 2x, times the derivative of the second. Well, what's the derivative of cos? It's minus sine. Just please put those brackets there because a multiplication sign next to a minus sign doesn't have much meaning. We want to put the brackets there. Plus the derivative of the first, which is 2x minus 2 in brackets because it's two terms, times cos x. And you can simplify that by taking the minus to the front and so on. But that's the derivative. Next one, the derivative of sine of x squared. So it's important to notice here, we've got the derivative of sine of a function. So the chain rule works here. So the derivative of sine of a function is cos of the function times the derivative of the function. There we go. As simple as that. So that's sine and cos. Let's look at these four examples. I've just got them here so that just to emphasize that you don't get confused with what happens first, because these are all examples of where we have to use the chain rule. But if you look at the first two functions, they're definitely not the same function, so we have to treat them much differently when we differentiate, but I just want to know, know that you can notice the difference. So the first one is sine of the root of x. The next one is the root of sine of x. So in the first function, when I find that derivative, We've got sine of a function. So I'm not worried about the root yet. I look at the sine first. That's the outside thing that's happening. So the derivative of sine of a function is cos of that function. Now I'm multiplied by the derivative of that function. Whereas the second example, I've got the root of sine of x. So the outside thing is happening is the root. It's just the root of a function. So the derivative of the root of something is 1 over 2 root something. And I'm saying something, we're talking about sine x, times the derivative of the something, which is cos x. So these two are definitely very different questions. That's why I put them together so you can be sure to notice the difference and where to start with your differentiation. Same with the next two, cos of x to the power 5 and cos to the power 5 of x. Just a notational thing if you're not Comfortable with this notation? This is the same as saying cos of x to the power 5, the whole thing. But it's a bit clumsy to write that. It's nicer to write it in this first format where the 5 is next to the cos. But then we know it's not x to the power 5. It's the whole cos of x that I'm raising to the power 5. So let's look at the derivative of cos of x to the power 5. So this is the derivative of cos of something. So the derivative of cos of something is minus sine of something, whatever that something is times the derivative of something. So the derivative of x to the power 5 is 5x five to the power 4. Whereas the second example, I've got cos of x, everything to the power 5. So I've got a function to the power 5. So that's the first thing I'm thinking of when I differentiate. Something to the power 5. And the derivative is 5 something to the power 4 times the derivative of something. And that something is cos x. So it's 5 cos x to the power 4 times the derivative of cos x, which is minus sine x. So just notice the difference between these examples. All right, now what about tan x? We know we can write tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. But what if I had to find the derivative of tan x? We're going to use it in the form sine x over cos x. So the derivative of sine x over cos x, I'm going to use the quotient rule. It's the denominator squared. Write down the denominator. Take the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. There we go. 
We can simplify that as cos squared x. Minus and a minus make a plus sine squared x. We can see why we wanted to simplify it over cos squared x. What is cos squared of x over sine squared x? That's just 1 over cos squared x. And there we go. So the derivative of tan of x is either 1 over cos squared x, or you can look at it as sec squared x. And that's how we get to the derivative of tan of x. We do not even need the definition of the derivative root. We can just use sine and cos. And same for the other tr two trig functions. And here I've listed them. The derivative of tan is sec squared. Similarly, with a quotient rule, we can find the derivative of cot as minus cosec squared. Let's look at sec. We know sec of x is the same as 1 over cos of x, which we can write as cos to the power minus 1 of x, or cos of x to the power minus 1. So, if I had to find the derivative of cos of x to the power minus 1, it's just minus 1 cos of x to the power minus 2 times the derivative of cos of x, which is minus sine of x. So let's see. The minus times the minus is a plus. Now I've got sine of x divided by cos squared x. And that's the same as sine of x over a cos of x. I'm taking the cos squared part times 1 over cos of x, which gets us to tan of x times sec of x. So for none of these trigonometric functions, do we need to use the definition of the derivative? As long as we can explain where the derivative of sine of x and cos of x come from, we can deduce all of these. So let's just use two of them. If y is equal to tan of a function, then the derivative is sec squared of the function times the derivative of the function. In this case, the function is 4x squared minus 3. And the derivative of 4x squared minus 3 is 8x. Now here I've got the root of sec x, so the derivative, I've got the root of a function, so it's 1 over 2 root the function, times the derivative of the function, which is sec x tan x. So these ones you probably have to list to try and remember them. You'll have to learn these to know what they are, but if you use them a lot, you actually start remembering. All right, let's look at an application. Find the equation of the tangent line to the function f of x equal to sine of x over 2x at the point x equal to pi. So there's a lot of information here, but as soon as we see the terminology tangent line, we think derivative. Because the derivative gives me the degree, uh, the gradient of the tangent line to a point. So let's look at tangent line. f of x is equal to sine of x over 2x. So we want the derivative. That's going to get me there. This is the quotient rule, sine of x divided by 2x, so I've got 4x squared, or 2x, the whole thing squared, 2x times the derivative of sine of x is cos of x, minus sine of x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. All right, now the gradient of this tangent line is my derivative in the x point that they've given me, where x is equal to pi. So I can substitute that in. So that's 2 pi times cos pi minus sine pi times 2 over 4 pi squared. Now, you probably want to grab your calculator and remember radians. This is in radians. And when I show you where the derivative of the sine function comes from, you'll see why we need it to be in radians. All right. So radians, you probably want to grab your calculator. I'm just going to draw a curve. That is sine of x, that's 2 pi, we're looking at pi, so sine is 0 at pi. While cos, that's 2 pi, and pi, cos is minus 1 at pi. So I've got minus 2 pi over 4 pi squared, which is minus 1 over 2 pi. There we go. So now we want the equation of the tangent line. We've got the gradient. To find the equation of the tangent line, we're going to look at, you can use either y equal to mx plus c, if you prefer that version, or we can look at y minus the y-coordinate is equal to the gradient times x minus the x-coordinate. 
Now here our x coordinate is pi. What is our y coordinate? Well, sine of pi over 2 pi. Sine of pi I know is 0. So our point is pi and 0. So we've got running out of space. y minus 0 is equal to minus 1 over 2 pi x minus pi. So y is then minus 1 over 2 pi x plus a half. And that's the equation of the tangent line. So any things that we can do with derivatives, it doesn't matter if our functions now are trigonometric functions, we can still do the same things. And that's the derivatives of the trigonometric functions.